Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Working Conversations podcast, where we talk all things leadership, business communication, and trends in organizational life. I'm your host, Dr. Janelle Anderson. Today's topic, as do many of my topics, comes from a real leader with a real problem, Mary. Mary is a senior leader in a large company who manages a large staff. And in the past few years, the company has switched to unlimited paid time off as a way to attract and retain the best talent. One of her longtime employees has started taking one week of vacation time every month. Yes, you heard that right. One full week of vacation time every month. Whether she's getting on a plane and going somewhere or staying home and having a staycation is irrelevant. She's taking a full week off every month and she feels totally entitled to do so since the company now has unlimited vacation. Mary feels caught between a rock and a hard place. On one hand, she's got an attractive employee benefit that has helped her make some great hires in the past year. And on the other hand, a longtime employee who feels entitled to and is abusing this policy. She asked me what to do about it. With employee benefits expanding in numerous ways to attract and retain talent in this tight labor market, similar situations are bound to show up with other attractive employee benefits as well that can be abused. So I thought I'd share with you all what I shared with Mary. So let's start with a little background. The average paid time off, or PTO for short, in the United States for workers is 10 vacation days per year depending on the company policy. That's basically your standard two weeks of vacation per year with state and federal holidays and sick time and perhaps a couple of personal days thrown in for good measure. People with more seniority, either in years of service or in positional authority, are typically granted more. Now, over the past few years, more and more companies have moved to an unlimited PTO policy, not just here in the U.S., but around the world. They have become increasingly popular in recent years as companies strive to offer their employees a more flexible work-life balance. And when competition for talent is fierce and burnout is a significant issue, it makes sense that companies would turn to unlimited PTO to attract and retain workers. But what happens when it gets abused? Because absolutely, with a policy like this one, comes the potential for abuse like our friend Mary is experiencing from one of her direct reports. Mary's employee was taking excessive vacation, one week per month. But there are other ways in which employees might take advantage of the policy as well. They might be using excessive time off to cover up poor work performance, or starting a side hustle, or even working another job. If you're a manager or an HR professional, it is essential to know what to do when employees abuse unlimited paid time off. So let's get into unlimited PTO and how to manage it and employees' expectations of it in general. And then I'll get to the specific advice for Mary on how to address the employee who's taking one week off every month. The first step in preventing abuse of unlimited PTO is to set clear expectations for employees. If you're in human resources, communicate the company's policy clearly and outline the expectations for when and how much time can be taken off with new employees as they're onboarded. Or if you're just starting unlimited PTO, make it absolutely clear that there are limits to its intended use. Make it clear that while the policy is designed to offer flexibility, it should not be abused. Put some guardrails on your unlimited PTO, and by that I mean provide guidance on what abuse of the program looks like, including examples. Then, have some consequences for abuse. Explain the consequences of abusing the policy, including disciplinary action and potentially losing the privilege of unlimited PTO or whatever other consequence you've chosen. Ensure that employees understand the impact of their absences on their colleagues and the company goals. What is the impact of them being gone? That will help ensure they follow the policy's intended spirit. If you're a manager, reinforce the human resource team's message and remind employees that while this is an employee benefit, it's also a privilege. Not all companies have this benefit, and there are limits to its application. Now, if your company has unlimited PTO, remember that it's still important to monitor employee absences regularly. 
This in and of itself can help prevent abuse. When employees know that their absences are being tracked, many of them will be mindful of that and will keep their absences in check. So you do need to keep track of how much time employees are taking off and for what reasons. If you do have employees with a significant number of PTO days, analyze their patterns of absence and assess whether you see signs of abuse, such as employees taking time off in consecutive weeks or taking time off during busy periods. (laughs) Or like Mary's direct report, make sure they're not taking a full week off every month. Make sure managers are aware of the team's absences and are actively managing their workload to prevent disruption to the team's productivity as well. Now, I strongly recommend that the PTO still does need to be approved by a manager before being granted. That puts in some additional guardrails so that managers can intervene if an employee is requesting time off that interferes with business needs or staffing continuity. For example, at seasonally busy times, product launches, and the like. Transparency about the request from the employee through an approval process will help employees communicate their desired plans in advance and keep their managers informed of any changes. And this transparency will also help managers plan for team absences and ensure that their work is covered while employees are away. It will also help prevent employees from taking excessive time off without approval. Now, I use a similar process in parenting. If my kids want to do something with friends, like hang out after school, go to the mall, or have a sleepover, the answer is almost always going to be a yes, provided their schoolwork is done and any chores around the house that they need to do are complete. When the basics are covered, it's easy to give a yes. On the other hand, if their work isn't getting done, they've got a no coming. And there's one more nuance to my policy. I need to know where they are. Otherwise, they've got a no coming. So if they're at a friend's house and then they decide to go to the mall, they need to let me know that their plans have changed and that they're headed to the mall. Again, as long as their request is reasonable, they will almost always get a yes. Violate the policy of letting me know where you are and you've got a no coming. And for you parents who may want to use this technique in your own parenting, I get to hold on to that no for as long as I want. Otherwise, they'll just ask to do something that they really don't care about that much just to use up the no. (laughs) I'm also transparent about that when we discuss the rule. You got a no coming? I get to decide when I'm going to use it. Okay, back to employees and unlimited paid time off. If you've adequately and clearly defined what the abuse of unlimited PTO looks like with examples, and if an employee is Abusing the unlimited PTO policy, it's important to document the behavior. Of course, before we go putting offenses into their personnel file, we do need to have a conversation with them about what's not working and how to turn things around. And that's the advice that I gave to Mary. And hold on, we'll get to exactly what I shared with her about having that conversation with the employee. So if it's still happening after you've discussed it with the employee, keep a record of their absences and any communication related to those absences. This documentation will be important if disciplinary action is required. It will be also useful if the company decides to revoke the employee's unlimited PTO privilege. Now, you may run into a situation of abuse of unlimited PTO for very different reasons than Mary's employee had. So here's an alternate look at the situation. Let's say an employee is taking excessive time off due to personal reasons. In this case, we need to handle it differently and offer some support. This could include offering counseling services, flexible work arrangements, or time off without pay. You may want to direct them to the resources in your employee assistance program or employee well-being program if your company has one. I talked extensively about these back in episode 77, titled, Let's Talk About Your Well-Being at Work. I'll link it up in the show notes so that you can find it easily. Likewise, if an employee is taking off due to work-related stress or burnout, offer support and help them manage their workload to avoid future absences. And here, your employee assistance program or well-being program can be a great resource again. Now, before we leave this topic, let me just add that if time off without pay is being considered and it's family-related, family medical-related, here in the United States, we have the 
Family Leave Medical Act, or FLMA. This offers employees a chance to take time away from their job without losing their job when there is a family medical issue at hand. There should be a clearly defined demarcation point in your unlimited PTO policy that says when unlimited PTO ends and FMLA begins. Okay, so here's what I shared with Mary. I told her, you have to address this with the employee. It's not okay for them to be paid a full salary and only work 75% of the time. Because if they're taking one week off every month, they're taking 25% of the days of the year off. That is not in the spirit of how unlimited PTO works. When an employee abuses the unlimited PTO policy, it's important to address that behavior right away. Be very prompt about it. So Mary needs to schedule a meeting with the employee to discuss their absences and the impact on the team and on the company's goals. She needs to do that, well, frankly, months ago when it really first started to show up. She should hold that conversation like she would any difficult conversation. And if you need a booster shot on that, Catch episode 64 and episode 8, both on difficult conversations, or grab a copy of my book, Head On, How to Approach Difficult Conversations Directly. And we'll link all that up in the show notes. So hold that conversation like you would any difficult conversation. Open with common ground so they don't get defensive. Discuss the organizational impact of their absence and the spirit of the unlimited PTO policy. Then ask for their side and listen to their reasons for the absences. If at this point in the conversation, they haven't realized the errors of their ways, make it absolutely clear that their behavior is unacceptable. Explain the consequences of further abuse of the policy, including disciplinary action. Then, plan a time in the future in which to check in and see how it's going for them. Put that meeting on the calendar right away so that you don't forget. That way, when you have the follow-up meeting, you can acknowledge their turnaround, if indeed they have turned around their behavior. And what gets acknowledged gets repeated. Or, if they haven't turned it around, you can have a coaching conversation to get them back on track, if they're not following through or if they're upset or resentful. Now, as a final note, if abuse of the unlimited PTO policy becomes a widespread problem, it may be necessary to revise the policy. This could include setting a limit on the amount of time that can be taken off each year or requiring approval for extended or multiple absences. It might also be necessary to clarify the policy and the consequences of abuse. Ensure that employees are absolutely aware of any changes to the policy and reasons for the revisions. As you can see from Mary's situation, unlimited PTO policies can be a great benefit to employees and they can help you attract and retain talent in this time of fierce competition for the best employees. But unlimited PTO can also be abused if it's not managed properly. It's important to set clear expectations, monitor employee absences, encourage transparency, document abuse, address the behavior promptly, offer support when merited, and revise the policy if necessary. By following these steps, you can prevent abuse of the policy and ensure your employees are using their time off responsibly. And it can be that great employee benefit that it is intended to be. All right, my friends, if you enjoy this content and you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button and knock that little bell so that you get notified every time there's a new episode out. I'm also starting to make some other videos there too. So even if you're listening on a podcast app, you'll want to head over to YouTube and subscribe so that you don't miss a thing. Wherever you're listening or watching, please leave me a review. It helps other listeners find me, and it just plain old makes me feel good. Until next time, my friends, be well. And take some vacation.